Look at that nice blurred background. Oh, I know, it's lovely. Is it too down? Doesn't change my face, that? but it looks better. I feel like I look the same. Yeah, pretty the much. The camera may look better. The angle's better, but I still look the same. None of this has no, changed. None of this has changed. <laughs> This is very true. We've come up with a lot of original concepts creative, sitting in the same room together. <laughs> remember creative cuts happened when we were at that house a year ago. That's right. That's so, right. Yeah. And so today we have something that I have been excited about for a while. It's taken a little bit of time to pull it together. Elizabeth creates beautiful art. You know that. It's not like I have to tell that to you. But up until now, the only way for you to have some of her art or something that's similar is to buy one of her pieces. What we have devised is an option for you or a way for you to recreate some of her art in a way that you can hang it in your home. So it starts with two sheets of rice paper. And these might look familiar because these are crows that Elizabeth has done recently and they have been incredibly popular. Celestial crows, right? That's what you call them? Yeah, celestial crows. And look, we have to give them a closer look at this fantastic mm -hmm. rice paper. There we go. This is amazing rice paper. The reproduction of the art, the color is fantastic. Yeah, it's really, really done. This is done in Italy. It's archival, it's fade resistant. And so it's a nice starting point. And we're gonna also, we're gonna kit this up. In that, in that kit, is also going to be one of these eight by 10 ampersand gesso boards. So this is prepared and ready for you to use. So along with those two rice papers, so two kits, it includes a rice paper. We're gonna give you some stuff. Why don't you show them those? Oh, so here we go. So you can create. This is my Vanna White uh, it is. moment. Have at it, Vanna. Okay, go. So you, you <laughs> can create either one of these. So we have crow one and crow two, and don't ask me which one is which. But the whole point is we have given you the stuff that you need with very little additions that will allow you to create a piece of art that is a recreation of one of Elizabeth's works. You can put her art in your house. You can make it your own. We're gonna give you, you ready to show? Babe? I'm ready. Okay, so we're gonna give you the rice paper. It will have <laughs> the, the board. And then we're going to give you, uh, and we'll talk about that writing that you see on the back in one second. We're gonna give you a creative cut. We're going to either, we're gonna give them one of each, right? So we're gonna give you a creative cut done in watercolor. We're gonna give you the one that's named lattice and acanthus leaves. And what that allows you to do is take pieces of them and use them as embellishments on here. The other thing that you'll see is postage stamps. Now, Elizabeth frequently uses postage stamps in her backgrounds, but we're gonna include a handful of them in your kits so that you can pick and choose and find some fun ways to use them. Now you talk about that, because that was your idea. What was my idea? The stamps in the lattice. Oh, the stamps in the lattice, yeah. So I put the uh, lattice down and I like the square openings, and so I found some stamps that fit in there but gave me a little room around it, so I put them in three different positions within the squares, and it was kind of fun. So I really like working with the stamps in the lattice. And yeah. we're gonna show you how to do that. The other piece of this, and I don't know if you can wiggle that so it shimmers, we're gonna give you a jar of... Wiggle what until it shimmers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been a long three days. Get with the program, this. sister. We're, we're gonna see. give you go. some of the, um, the Ranger Stickles gel. This is the one that's named Dark Matter. I don't know why that's not focusing, but it's not focusing. Anyway. It's not focusing on the grow? Uh, no, on the it, was, it was a little bit blurry, but nevertheless. Now here it is. When yeah. you, yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> so uh, now here's, here's the tricky part. As I said, this has been five videos in three days. And right now we don't know exactly when this video is going to go live. With that said, if you look at the back of this board that Elizabeth is gonna show you, we have six of these that we made during the course of filming this video. And Elizabeth, had, you'll have to read it. because Is it in focus? It, it's backwards, it's mirror imaged. So just, Well, we just, can flip the video. Well, can, oh, there we go, there we go. Read it to them. So there are six of these and what we're going- She's so bossy. Oh, this is an only child in action. <laughs> it says, thanks for being a great jobless customer, Elizabeth St. Hilaire. And I also, signed the ones that we made on the front. Yes, she did. So this is six of these in various incarnations that anyone who buys one of the kits, one or both, whatever works for you, works for us, 
on the first day that we release them. But if you look at the bottom of this video, there'll be a scroller there that tells you what the first day of release is. And that's the day that you have had to have submitted an order and we will put you in a random drawing for one of the six boards that we made while we were here. Yeah, we've got six very different ones and um, they're, they're all made from the elements of the kit and um, we're gonna give them away. And they were made right here in Sacramento they with were. you and me working together. They How were. cool is that? And you know, one of the interesting things is that somewhere here, can you, you know what, they're over there, never mind. But I'll get it, what is it? I would, hold on. You're closer. All right, don't get pushy, my God. <laughs> So hold that. Look at that. So one of the things that Elizabeth is going to show you in the video, and honestly, she's doing most of the demoing because it's a her thing. One of the things that she'll show you is how you can alter the background color of the, the rice paper without affecting the crow. Without affecting the crow. And the cool thing about affecting the background color is with the translucent colors, you still see the texture through and the rice paper takes the color beautifully. So what was previously on beige is now on pink. It's awesome. It's awesome. I'd like to say that was my idea, but it wasn't, it was hers. I think we partially came with a, up with it together. Okay. All right. So we'll go with that. Yes. So we're done, right? We're ready to go. But if you look all the way down and you expand the description of this video, you'll find links to all of the products. Yeah, and the kit. Uh, so, yes. So now we're going to show you how we put together the kit. Let's do it. All right, here we go. So included in this kit is an ampersand museum series archival painting panel. So this is professionally primed and ready to go. It doesn't require any prep and it is archival so it will eliminate support induced discoloration and it'll keep your artwork beautiful for years to come. So that is the the 8 by 10 panel that's included in the kit and we are going to be adhering the rice paper crow to the panel with Dina Wakely matte gel medium. So we're just going to squirt some of that out pretty liberally onto the board. And then I'm going to use my favorite glue brush to spread that around. And the key with um, this application is to make sure that you get the gel medium out to the edges really well and out to the corners really well, because that's the area that we tend to sometimes not get such great coverage and then your art is going to peel up on the edges and we don't want that. So make sure you get a lot of gel medium all the way out to the edges and especially out to the corners. And what's nice about the matte medium is if any of it finds its way to the surface of the paper, it's not going to look shiny and you won't even know it's there. So, Okay, so I've got that all spread out all the way out to all my edges and corners. And then I'm going to put the crow rice paper right on there. And I'm going to line up the edge here with the edge of the board. And I'm lining up the bottom of the paper right here with the very bottom of the board. So then I'm just going to put that down with my hands. And I'm going to take a, a credit card or an old room key to push the air bubbles out. So you're going to push from the center out. And it's pretty simple. The beauty of this rice paper is it's so highly absorbent and it's such a nice thin sheet that it really glues down perfectly flat without much effort. So you're not going to have a lot of air bubbles or issues with wrinkling. So ultimately we're going to flip this over and we're going to trim the overhang off. Okay. So now that we've got that on the panel, we're going to um, apply a couple of postage stamps. So the postage stamps are something that you can see were incorporated in the original artwork. And I just love adding postal stamps from other countries and with interesting imagery and colors uh, to my work. So I'm going to embellish with a few of the stamps that are also in the kit. I'll put a little bit of the matte medium down in the area where I want them. And I'm just going to sort of spread this 
in a little bit of this whole area here. And then I'm adding this awesome moth stamp. And I'm just going to brush the glue over that's still on my brush. And you can stagger them, put them sideways, put them upside down, run them right off the edge. You know, this is how you get to put your own kind of spin on this rice paper design. So put a little bit more there and I'm just going to put this one like that. And then I have this uh, nice stack of the postage stamps, which also come in the kit on that lower left hand corner of the bird. So the next step in the process of creating this crow artwork is to incorporate the creative cuts. So there's a lattice creative cut and acanthus leaves creative cut. Two quite different designs. So this one's pretty straight um, lines and this one's very, very curvy and organic. So um, I like to cut these apart because using them just as the big piece because um, it would be kind of overwhelming. So I like to cut the elements out of the creative cuts and apply them sort of in a new way um, on the artwork. So for this uh, version, for example, I cut a row of the squares. So I just took the scissors and cut them right along the edge like this. And the nice thing about this, uh, creative cut is it's going to give you several rows of squares so you can use for other mixed media projects. I'm just going to cut it out of the lattice like that. So that gives me the three squares and then you see I, I jogged them so I'm going to then take this one and cut it along this square like that and then I have the three squares and I sort of jog them in an L alignment that's slightly off. And I'm going to apply those again the same way that I applied the paper to the board with the included gel medium and the glue brush with glue under and over. And then you can see that I've incorporated postage stamps into these little squares. So I like to find stamps that uh, fit in there but leave some room around it so we can see the background showing through. So you can see I've got some little small postage stamps included in the squares. Now on this one with the acanthus leaves, this is a lot of fun to cut out kind of swirling elements. So you just kind of come in here and cut around the pattern that's already there like this. And you can take out an element like this. Then I'll smooth out the edges. Maybe round this. Like that. And these uh, creative cuts are on watercolor paper. So they're sturdy and they have a nice texture. And they also take paint if you're inclined to colorize them for the background. So on this one, I just brushed a little bit of gold paint over the top of the white. So you can still see the white, but it sort of toned it down to be a little bit closer to the color of the background because this one's a little darker. On this version, the background is lighter. And you can actually see the creative cut here from the original artwork. And you can see that uh, the lighter watercolor paper um, doesn't stand out as boldly against the dark. So it could stay white or it could be tinted gold or whatever you like. And that is how I apply the creative cuts. And you'll be left with, um, like I said, a decent amount of material for another project. The last uh, step in putting this all together is to apply my favorite stickles glitter gel and this is dark matter and this is just beautiful for the crow because it is suspended in blackish purple and then it's got all these colors of glitter in different shapes in iridescent which is really great for the crow and very easy to apply this we're just going to take a palette knife and I'm going to focus in both of these pieces on the dark areas. So when you look at the piece, you'll see the darkest part is here and here and right there and the legs. 
and in this one, the darkest part is here, underneath here, and these. So that's where I'm going to put the dark matter. So I'm just going to scoop a little bit out with the palette knife and just run it along that dark area, scraping it. And that's plenty. I probably have too much. Um, and then you just apply it right into those dark areas. Don't worry if it comes over into the light area. It doesn't need to be a precise application. It's an accent and it's really going to give it a bit of sparkle and glitter and it doesn't need to be perfect. So you can apply a little like that. And even if you wanted to do a few dabs into the dark parts of the feathers here, and I want to make sure I get some on the front face, just like that. Okay, so now you can see how really beautiful of an effect that is. It's going to give your crow a really nice sparkle. You can see it on this one too. It's just a really beautiful effect on the top and really takes that crow up to the next level. So the tip for the stickless glitter gel is that it dries rather slowly. So you really need to set it aside and be patient for it to dry. And that's why I suggest it's the last step that you do and then set this aside for several hours um, for it to dry. So if you want to take your creative crow kit one step further, here's some alternate options you can add with materials that you maybe already have in your studio. So I'm going to show you how to tint the background. So taking the paper from the neutral color and bringing it into a bright color of your choice, whether it's uh, got a sheen on it, like this is a metallic uh, sparkly blue background. Um, here's a sort of a flat magenta background color. Um, and I'm going to demonstrate how to do that. So because this is rice paper and it's so absorbent, the color will tend to want to uh, bleed. So what we're going to do is coat the crow with the gel medium so that he will resist when we paint in the background. So I'm just going to take the gel medium and I'm using an angled um, half inch shader Princeton velvet touch brush and I like the angle because I'll be able to put it on the corner edge up here and get right into that small area of the beak with the point so we're gonna come in here like that and even into these little fuzzy pieces under his chin you can use the pointed part of this brush to And then I'm going to come down the string. You could paint over the key, uh, but I'm going to use a gold background, a gold metallic background, and I think that'll look good over the key, so I'm not going to paint over the key. But if you wanted to mask off the key for you were using a different color, then you would mask off the key the same way. Okay, so we're just going to paint that all in with gel medium and let it dry. And now, like a Julia Child trick, out of the other oven comes the perfectly dry crow. So the next step is to color it with the fluid acrylic. This is gold, and I'm going to water this down. And we're working on this nonstick craft mat surface, so we can apply water and use this as our palette right here. And... <laughs> there. Okay. So now we've got this nice watery mixture of a metallic gold and we're going to apply that over the background. I think I might have added a bit too much water. No, that's good. The thing with metallic is you have to angle it to the light to really see it. So, so and this is a, a nice color for the metallic gold because the background color is um, in that family. Uh, so they the gold blending over the background color really works nicely together. So you're just going to be careful still to go stay around the edges and off the bird, but the matte medium is going to help it from bleeding into the bird. And the color is going to soak 
into the surface of the rice paper because it's so absorbent. So you're going to want to do it on a surface that it's not going to stick to. So we're using the craft mat here. Uh, but if you don't have that product, you can do it on a sheet of pallet paper or a sheet of plastic or some glassine. But you have to put it on a surface that it's not going to stick to when it dries. So something slick. And then you're just going to continue to paint all the way around the edge with whatever color you choose. And you're going to end up with these really nice, totally different looking pieces because of the background color. The next thing that I added to this one was the blossom foam stamp. I love this. This is designed by Barb from Joggles and this one I put just with blue paint, roll it on with the brayer or put it on the gel plate and press it into the paint on the gel plate. And then I just stamped partial where I came off the edges. And I think the blossom stamp was my best choice because of the way that it filled these two negative space areas really rather nicely. And I did a, I did a double stamp with one paint application. So you can see that the stamp is very bold here, but it's much lighter down here. I like doing that. So I stamped it for the first time and then I did not re-ink it and I stamped it over here the second time and I got a paler kind of more subtle print as uh, opposite my bold print. And that is how you can alter the background color and the, um, add the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Barb is, Barb is, is, has the, the, uh, what do you call them? The, uh, the, producer the, the cards director? off oh, the, the screen, cue cards. the cue cards. Barb has the cue cards and she's pointing <laughs> and I'm looking at her like, what the heck are you trying to tell me? <laughs> so here, remember you used a black, um, acanthus leaves creative cut. That's just an option. We don't include the black in the kit, but it's available for sale. If you wanted to do that and you get to add color over the top, which really changes the look. This has a little bit darker look and feel than the other ones because the creative cut itself is so dark. Yeah, the black is, uh, we decided to include the white in the kit, but the black um, is also uh, available from Joggles, not only in the designs that are in the kit, but in several other designs that I have incorporated many of these into the backgrounds of many of my paintings. So, so yeah, I was playing around with this one. It's black, but I did the same thing uh, I rolled some color onto it that was um, similar to the background to sort of tone it back a little bit. So, um, and these are fantastic when they're mounted to the board and trimmed. So the last step to do is once everything is perfectly dry, then we're going to show you how to trim it so that you have your finished piece. When it comes time to trim the excess rice paper away from the board, you have a couple of options. You can either do it in the state that this is in, which is dry but not embellished, or you can wait and embellish your whole piece and then go ahead and do it. So I'm working on one of the self-healing mats. I have an X-Acto knife. Treat yourself to a new blade because you will feel bad if this doesn't go, to par go the way that it should because the paper was wet or the blade was dull. You're going to use the board itself as your guide and you're just going to run that blade along the edge. And I've got mine angled in a little bit so that I'm cutting as close to the very edge of that board is absolutely possible and you can see how easy that pops off so super simple to do the most important thing I can tell you again a brand new blade and make certain that the rice paper is completely dry that's how simple trimming is